Thank you, Paul. So hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Paul, and thank you all uh, hosts for helping me, obviously, today. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's good to see you. I mean, I can't see you, but I can feel your presence. And today we will be talking about giving feedback and about a concept called growth mindset. So I will start by sharing my presentation. I hope everybody can see it well. Yes. And uh, you will probably agree that the way we give feedback and also the way our students receive and react to feedback can really uh, in, uh, influence the way they learn and how much they take from each session. So today, together, we will look at what makes feedback successful. We will look at the hurdles. We will look at the concept of growth mindset and its opposite. And I will be sharing some techniques with you that I have been experimenting with that seek to encourage uh, growth mindset in our students. So first of all, uh, uh, if you have been brave enough to use our language, you might agree with me uh, that it's almost impossible to say exactly what you want, to express yourself exactly the way you want. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but as you will soon realize, uh, my speech is always full of uh, imperfections or all kinds of regrets. I wish I had said more or less or passed more or paused less. I wish I had chosen a different word, you name it. So this might be something that we all share, and I definitely know how it feels to make mistakes. Now, uh, what is even more sad is that there are imperfections in my speech and writing that I'm not even aware of, but to a more proficient uh, user of the language, they might be absolutely obvious, all kinds of funny uh, moments that go completely under my radar. So my point is that uh, getting really genuine, good feedback can be a complete game changer. Uh, okay, so what even is it, good feedback? So we've asked you, and thank you everybody if you have done the pre-session questionnaire. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done it though, don't worry. And I just have to tell you that the last time I looked at the results was at midnight. So if you've answered just now, there will obviously be updates. So this is, in uh, your words, what makes feedback successful. So sorry for the colors that comes from Google Forms. <laughs> so you can see that we are ambitious people, right? So we want to notice concrete improvements in student speech after our feedback. We want to simply see whether they have noticed some uh, expressions we had offered them and they started use, they start using them. We want to see that they uh, start using certain tenses more consciously or they um, have used some communication strategies that we have suggested that they could use. So we want to see specific concrete evidence of the improvements. Also, though, uh, most of you, actually 24 uh, out of all the participants that answered, want to also um, help students in the way that they feel more motivated afterwards, which for me is the hardest thing, because traditionally, this is something that might discourage us if we hear a lot of error correction, people can take it the wrong way, and they may not to be uh, as eager as we would want them to be to receive feedback. So this is, again, a very ambitious goal. And I agree it's relevant. And thirdly, it doesn't hurt if students say something along the lines of, OK, this was very helpful. The way you highlight uh, the opportunities for me to use my tenses, that has really helped. Now I can see how I can uh, speak more specifically. So this is always really, really great to hear. On the other hand, though, <laughs> it's definitely not easy. And there are a lot of things that can go wrong when we give feedback. Actually, there are so many things that can go wrong that I've dedicated a special section of my webinar to what can go wrong. So I would like you to approach this creatively. 
If you remember situations where you did your best, you prepared some comments or a gap fill, or you uh, gave people your best possible feedback, but it somehow backfired. For example, these are techniques we have all probably used. If you tried using what we call recast, the last one, it can very often go unnoticed. For example, a student says, uh, my class this morning from 7.45, we talked about uh, stereotypes, men, women, uh, how some people think that women uh, speak more than uh, men. And it's like a rule, well, stereotypes. And uh, one lady said, uh, let me think, she said something along the lines of, okay, nowadays, I think this has changed because there is more like of this feeling that women and men are more like the same. I mean, they're like not the same, but there is more of this kind of, and I said, equality. And she said, yes, equality. So this is like a lucky recast situation when she actually noticed. And then we all later tried to use the word equality. But as a matter of fact, recasts very often just go unnoticed the student just ignores the comment so this is all yours please choose one and send me a message saying how this can possibly go wrong so i know that some of these overlap immediate feedback can at the same time be corrected but just please choose one term and send me your messages i think perhaps one minute will do What was the question, Jamila? Can you say yes. the question again? Okay, the question is, how can these techniques backfire? What can go wrong in these uh, scenarios when we give immediate feedback? For example, somebody is speaking and the teacher immediately corrects. If we correct after the task, again, what can go wrong from the student's perspective? If we correct mistakes, uh, Again, what is the possible downside of it? So any ideas are welcome. Oh yeah, so Ulita, misunderstanding. Aswini, immediate feedback can cause a misunder... Yeah, absolutely, absolutely can cause... Let me find that message, that was really good. Immediate feedback can rise students' anxiety. Oh, absolutely, good, uh, good answer, Lilia. And immediate feedback can discourage... Oh yeah. Uh, Madhulatha, children may feel bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, it's about immediate feedback. It can break the rhythm of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chadney. Uh, Jamila Ghazal, demotivation. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sergio, students might feel frustrated. These are excellent answers. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. It would be awesome if we could please host safety's answers because they are precious and they're brilliant. And I would love to use them to learn from them because they're very good. So thank you, everybody. And uh, have you ever tried uh, offering a word to somebody who was really struggling to express themselves? For example, uh, a student would be talking about their family and they would say, okay, so there are these two boys who were basically born on the same day and they look really similar. In fact, they look identical. And you as a teacher say, yeah, they're twins. And the student says, so are you saying that I can't say there are two boys who were born on the same day and they look the same. And you say, yeah, what well, you can. And there is a word for it, it's twins. Feel free to use that word. And the student gets really upset, right? Make sure that they never use that word. And next time you want to provide them with feedback, they just don't want to hear it because they feel like you've somehow undermined what they were saying. So this is a huge misunderstanding, obviously. And uh, there is a word for it. 
I will just go on to the next slide and show you something that has a lot to do with it. So for some reason, the slides are not moving right now. So I will start sharing from scratch, if that's OK. That's it fine, Jamila. Dark. OK, I will just stop sharing and start sharing from scratch, if that's OK. I hope you remember the scenario. <laughs> hmm. All right. So here we go. So my last comment was, there was a word for it. A student who really doesn't want to kind of learn more, they don't really want to be challenged in spite of the fact that you've tried your best. So my point was, there is a word for it. Yeah. This is what we call uh, the, uh, the fixed mindset. Here we go. And this is one of the, one of the terms coined by a professor of psychology, Carol Tweck, and it describes a mindset in which uh, we seek comfort and we want to uh, feel validated or our strengths to be validated rather than for our weaknesses to be exposed. Uh, from the other perspective, we all know how it feels. It's absolutely natural to want to feel safe and not to risk too much. And this is something that is really typical uh, for learners uh, with a fixed mindset that they just are not willing to experiment, which you can see is not really the best situation for learning because learning inevitably includes uh, experimenting, trying again, trying a new expression, uh, risking a little bit. And again, there is a word for this effort. And there is a mindset that uses exactly that. Okay, obviously I have some kind of slide order issue. Here we go. So this kind of mindset basically describes a person who seeks opportunities to learn and grow. So they see every mistake as an opportunity to learn from it. They're happy to be challenged and try more. Uh, as you can see, this is an ideal situation for learning. So uh, it has deep implications. And also the idea underpinning these two mindsets is quite deep. Uh, it might be the right time for asking you the next question. So we have the fixed mindset and we have the growth mindset. Yeah, And I would like to ask you in which of them you think People believe that their abilities are innate. So we are born with the abilities that we have, fixed or growth. Please send me your messages if you want to. Okay, 23 messages, that's amazing. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are really good. Yes, excellent. Both, okay, okay. This will be a nice long discussion. Excellent. Orlando says both. There are actually quite a lot of people who say both, right? So what I definitely agree with that, uh, having a growth mindset or having a fixed mindset may not be about one person. So it's not a person who always has one of these, but it's more about uh, us being ready to learn in different kinds of circumstances or even in different areas. So while you might be all about learning and keen to learn, for example, when it comes to learning a language, when it comes to improving your uh, driving skills, you might be a little bit more cautious. So it might um, easily uh, be the case that uh, we react differently in different situations. So thank you everybody for your responses. And the next question is, if we agree that we might have both of these mindsets present in one lesson, 
So how can we, uh, so to speak, accommodate both types of people, people who are ready to learn, they love error correction, and they will definitely react positively to it because that's that's what they do. And people who are being a little bit more cautious and they are terrified, they don't want to hear that they have made a mistake. So one technique I would like to try with you is what I call inclusive feedback. Right. Okay, I'm going back to inclusive feedback. Here we go. And the first box shows three usual directions of feedback that students uh, usually expect from us teachers, right? You know that traditionally, lots of teachers would just use correction, the one in the middle. But at some point, perhaps in the 80s of the 20th century, we have started realizing that it needs to be way more complex. We need to validate or confirm what students have uh, used uh, effectively already for them not to stop using it. You, for example, say, yeah, now this time you have used this tense so that I immediately understand when it happened or that it still has been true for you. Uh, well done for using your present perfect, makes it way clearer. So validation. That's very important. And uh, I call it enrichment. There might be a better term. Feel free to send it if you come up with a better term for this thing that we all do, that we offer a word or an expression that the students seem to have been trying to use, but they just didn't have the expression. So we kind of offer it so that they can uh, use it and speak perhaps more specifically. So this is nothing new. And I suggest that we blend them together. So I'll just show you what I mean. It's very, it's very simple. So imagine a situation where your students have been speaking about their jobs and their first interviews. And you hear these words from them. And some of them actually mispronounce them. They stress syllables, which are usually not stressed, which really doesn't help, doesn't make it clearer. And some of them stress the right syllables. Yeah, so you hear all of that from the group or from the groups, from the teams. So uh, let's not forget that for the people who have pronounced it in the wrong way, this might be terrifying. So one thing you can do to include both sides and to make everybody feel comfortable and engage everybody is when you say, Okay, you have used some very good expressions, right? Let's see where the word stress is. And you just play it using the Oxford Dictionary, Cambridge Mac Dictionary, uh, Macmillan, and you just play these words multiple times so that they can notice uh, the word stress. And you encourage everybody to try and try again, use your gestures, unemployment effectively until everybody, <laughs> until everybody says it uh, in the clearest possible way. So it's a very simple comment, but it seeks to include people who already pronounce the words correctly. They're kind of helping and modeling the uh, expected answers. At the same time, it creates this, creates this kind of good chaos in which the people who are really generally just trying can kind of hide and they can just keep on trying because um, um, speaking from my experience, I need to try a new word for seven to 15 times to actually make it sound clear. So if it's really difficult, I need to try many, many times. And it's super important to praise effort. Thank you for trying. Thank you for practicing with me. We are getting close. Let's just try again and yet again and one more time. Uh, thank you, everybody. I know it's not easy. So I hope that this can, in some small ways, help people feel more comfortable and there is just one more example here again people speaking about their work and you hear uh people mispronouncing these three i think it's like a an old times classic people always mispronounce these words uh uh at the same time uh it's not that they don't understand each other Although if you say walk instead of work, it doesn't make it easier. So one thing you might try to say is, 
okay, you have just some very good expressions. And you can also say an employee as a worker. Yeah, for a worker, you've used some good expressions. Um, and let's try to say them all together. So again, the people who have used them correctly get their validation. Yeah, so whoever already says work feels that okay, now they've heard it from Macmillan Dictionary. <laughs> so they're happy that they have been saying it correctly. At the same time, it encourages the people who are really just experimenting and finding the right vowel. It's really not easy. Um, John Miller. This, yes. Uh, sorry, really sorry to interrupt. Um, just had a couple of comments. People asking if you can make the slides full screen. I know it's not ideal for you. But yes, absolutely. The Thanks. thing is, I'm not sure. I've tried. I'm not sure. It skips to. It skips back to the first uh, slide for some reason. I'll go back. So if I go back here and I click on presenters, it yeah. just goes back. Okay, I'll, I'll just go one by one to the, yeah, this could be a way. We found a way. We found a way. Yes. Happy, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Samuel. Thank you. Um, so this is one thing you can try. Uh, and uh, there will be just two more examples. So uh, this is something that happens all the time that people experiment with, oh, I'm sorry, going back. People experiment with tenses, which is again, something you can praise. And some of them will inevitably uh, speak about the past, for example, about their use uh, present tenses, which is not ideal. It doesn't help the listener. So you can say, you shared some interesting memories of your first interviews. So now the question is for everybody, again, trying to involve the whole group, what will be the best tense here? And you just offer it to them as a gap fill. So again, the people who are sure how to use their past simple, they will uh, be helping the people who are really struggling and everybody will agree that this is the most effective way of saying it. So again, if you've noticed here at the beginning, what I've tried to do is to comment on the content. You have shared some interesting memories, uh, not only on the form, this is what we do a lot in our feedback that we all, all, almost always uh, focused on, focus on the troubleshooting aspect of it. We want to correct the mistakes and help with the improvements, but if we completely miss the content, we actually don't listen to what the person's saying. So this uh, obviously uh, is one way of encouraging the people to really share because we're also interested in the message. So this is for inclusive feedback. Thank you, everybody. And I'll just see if I have any uh, new comments. Oh, yes, these are very good, Chris. Also asking if the vowels in work and form are the same and different than what about word? This is such a good question and really relevant. So thank you, Chris. So I would say the vowels in work and word are the same. That's the long R. Feel free to say yes if you agree or no if you disagree. <laughs> and form, that clearly is an O. Yeah, so that's that's a different one. That's such a good comment. This is lovely. Okay. <laughs> so thank you for sending me sending me these very relevant questions throughout. And my favorite part, uh, what can go wrong? So we have agreed that with delayed feedback, um, people might feel that after the main task, for example, a speaking task or the writing task, they have done the task. The teacher has said, thank you. So now it's my time to kind of rest or chill. So <laughs> no matter how hard you try and you prepare your feedback segment, they feel that this is now the downtime. So uh, it's a shame because your feedback uh, can be actually the moment where people can really benefit and learn. So what we need is their active participation. So one suggestion is that rather than giving feedback or from the perspective of the student receiving feedback, we as teachers create a feedback 
task. So it might be, again, very simple. Okay, here we go. And we call it, sorry, again, I'm getting back. Uh, card swap. So as I'm going down, you can think of how students can participate and use the comments that we all make and write down while people are speaking. So this is something that everybody does, that we collect comments, we write down certain expressions during speaking and writing tasks, and then we usually put them on the board, we kind of preach about what went well and what went wrong and how to learn from it. And this is one way of turning it into an activity. Now, we use uh, these icons or pictograms and these instructions with my students so that they can really try and work with it on their own. So this is one example of the uh, feedback cards created this week with my advanced groups. So they talk about mental health and also physical health. And you can see the icon here was used, complete and explain. So there were some missed articles, the icons on the top. So uh, the job is obviously to try to think of what there is in the gap and try to explain why this element needs to be there. So someone will say, okay, he was a doctor because we obviously use our indefinite articles with countable nouns, uh, Czech, the Czech Republic because, and so on and so on. So the good news is that you don't have to create the task afterwards because obviously there's not enough time for us to do everything we would, would we wish to. But as you're taking your notes, you can put them in this form already. It's very simple. It's basically cards with comments, but you always turn it into a task which has an instruction. So this one means say, say it, pronounce it. So obviously this addresses some of the mispronunciations People saying, uh, people devoicing the final voiced consonant, saying mood instead of mood. Then we have someone who pronounces three as a tree. Uh, then we have somebody who um, doesn't really see the difference between short and long vowels. So that's for them, feel versus fill. Uh, this is some topic related vocabulary from the discussion. So this is say, uh, and explain, they explain the expression as well as try to see it, the hypochondriac. So they try to say it while I'll just play it using a dictionary, an online dictionary, and they try to uh, say it on their own. So they say it and explain. So basically in this way, you use cards uh, that people can complete together in teams. So each team or pair gets uh, between three to five of these cards, they work with it together. They share uh, their comments. And once they have solved all of them, they simply stand up and they go and uh, grab a card that they haven't seen yet. And this basically continues until everybody has seen all the cards. So this is one way of involving people in their feedback session, so that in their feedback, so that they don't just receive something, but participate. So I'm just wondering what you think about it. So if you just want to send a comment such as, okay, this is impossible because, or yeah, I might try that because feel free to send me a message. Uh -huh. Okay, Michi. Okay, thank you, Michi. That's really nice. It's really kind of you. Okay, more comments. Okay, thank you much. Thank you, Orlando. 
Okay. Sorry, everybody, for mispronouncing your names. I'm really trying. Uh, Madulatha, nice activity. Thank you. That's very kind of you. That's very kind of you. Thank you, everybody. Does it work with adult learners as well? Yes, I do this with adult learners. Yes, this is a class for adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're wondering what I have tried with my teenagers who are, are, are kind of adults, just a little bit different adults, here is another idea. So this is something that you can try with teenagers. Yeah. As we have agreed, uh, people might feel criticized or being put on the spot. Nobody likes it. So this is one technique which seeks to address it. So I call it my collection. My teenagers love it. Uh, and let me know what you think about it. So to begin with, um, uh, if people feel constantly corrected, they might lose their motivation. So I try to turn error correction and feedback in general in something that encourages the sense of gain, getting something, collecting something. So the idea behind it is that we all like to collect valuable things. So the feedback comments can be such things. And I started by asking my teenagers what people collect nowadays. So if you would like to know, this is for you. Oh, okay. Obviously, yes, here we go. Enjoy. This is lovely. This is one B1, my B11 class. This is really funny, isn't it? Yeah. Money, coins, shoes. So I ask them what people collect. Yeah. So the sense of collecting valuable things or nice things, things we want to uh, keep. This is something that I have used to create this feedback activity. So basically, uh, during a writing task where you give people comments, you correct certain uh, elements, or during a speaking task, or even after and before a presentation, you share some wisdom, you give people tips. And at some point, you say, okay, each of you take these pieces of paper, each of you need three. Yeah, because each of you needs to write down and formulate three tips. So whatever you find relevant for yourself or your team or someone else, you need to write down three. So that's what they do. You can see some examples here <laughs> from one of my B11 groups. And what we do next, I usually help with that, of course. Uh, what we do next is we go to another uh, room. Uh, and what they need to do is to share their tips with everybody and create a team which has people with the most similar comments. So they just walk around, share their tips. And if they find somebody with similar tips, they kind of, it's not like they hold their hands, but they stay together because they're a team and they look for another person to perhaps join their team. Then I ask, okay, what are the teams? Which tips did you have in common? And also, this is super important. I don't forget to praise the, mo the most original comments. Yeah, so that they don't feel like having the same is always the good thing. It might be the opposite. So these are some more great tips formulated uh, by my students in their own way. And the next step is that I stress that these are really valuable comments. They're precious. That's why we don't want to lose them. And choose one of your cover pages of your notebook and stick them there because we are going to keep them forever and learn from them. So that's what they do. And that is the collection. So the point of this is that you are happy to collect. You know that these items are precious and we are definitely going to reuse them. For example, before our next presentation, we definitely want to reread all the comments related to uh, public speaking. <laughs> or before our next reading task, we just look at everything if there is anything related to reading. The same with speaking. And the goal is not to get the same comments, but to make new mistakes. <laughs> And obviously learn from what you've already uh, what you've already identified. So that's the collection. If somebody wants to tell me how they liked it or didn't like it, feel free to send me a message. Special answers are always yeah, Victoria. Yeah, liked it. Thank you, Michi. 
That is very kind of you. Love this, Miss Anna, thank you. Thank you. I'm not saying it works every time. It usually doesn't work the first time. People are really confused and they're wondering what on earth is happening. But once they get into the habit of collecting the tips, it very quickly becomes possible. Thank you, everybody. So, um, well, obviously, move on and already know that I need to start sharing from scratch to be able to move forward. Great, you go, you're sharing. And the next activity addresses uh, the feeling that we might have if we hear all kinds of critical comments from these three areas. So again, these are the traditional areas we as teachers know how to comment on, right? And we do it really well because we care about people's pronunciation. We hear everything. Uh, we suggest which vocabulary people could use and we keep commenting on people's grammar. It's our job, right? But from the perspective of the learner, this can be a little bit overwhelming in terms of actual production. So for example, me being aware of all my uh, imperfections, it might almost make me not to want to speak. And if you've ever learned a second language, you know how that feels. So one very simple way of helping people feel a little bit more comfortable in spite of all the correction is uh, using another category. Uh, and actually make it part of our regular feedback. So what could that category be? Okay, how about communication and task management strategies? The point is that even if I'm capable of making tons of mistakes, if I know certain very simple strategies, I can still uh, manage the situation in the way that I make myself understood and get my point across. For example, if I know how to start, because I have a simple strategy of saying, okay, let's start with the first question. <laughs> or if I listen to people, it helps a lot. Or if I react to what people say, that helps a lot. And it saves me even in situations when I make mistake or I struggle to understand, I know how to ask uh, and people will repeat what they're saying. So my suggestion is that we include communication and task management strategies uh, in our feedback and we make it something that people get really comfortable using because it gives them more uh, autonomy and they will feel like in spite of all the mistakes they know how to handle the speaking task how to manage the situation okay here's another question for you we have tried this with my colleagues from Prague and it went amazingly could you please tell me what you think number four, five, and six is? If they're all communication or task management strategies, please send me a message. Four, five, and six. What do you think the icons mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Good job, Rihanna. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Ulita. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. It is. That's exactly. Yes. See. So that just shows that pictograms are kind of universal. That's good news. And this is what I had in mind. Yep. So if it could mean that, it can mean many things. There are no wrong answers, but this is what I had in mind. So one simple thing you can do with these is you can try exactly this with your students, especially if you have already commented on these aspects of their speech or task management. You can simply give them this chart. Yeah. And they can just fill in the comments and then they can have long discussions about why this is important. Yeah, The answers can be very interesting. 
And it just encourages people to use these techniques more and hopefully feel more comfortable during their next speaking tasks. So this is just a tiny addition. Yeah. Again, we've tried this with my colleagues from Prague and one participant who is actually my line manager, hello, Travis, suggested that one really good idea would be that you help each other during the um, speaking task or even writing task. And I asked, well, who would the, the pictogram be? And we came up with an idea of like people holding hands for helping. So again, if you want to send me yours, feel free to. What other communication strategy should be there? Hmm, okay. That sounds good, Leah. Oh, I love it. Yeah, 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 listening, absolutely. Yeah, 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 listening's already there, but there's not enough of that. I can encourage your peers with the clapping hands, absolutely, a heart to speak authentically and from the heart, oh, that's lovely. Uh-huh, ask and answer, absolutely. Yeah, 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 emojis, what kind of emojis? Uh, medal for participation and taking risks, I love it. Aswini, yeah, 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 yeah. A volume. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sorry for deafening you if that's what gave you the idea that I'm speaking too loudly. Pair share, absolutely. Peer feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So these are some great suggestions. And uh, just to wrap it up, everybody, it's incredible what it has been 45 minutes together. Thank you so much for sharing, everybody. And here is our little um, summary. So we have tried to uh, encourage inclusive feedback by using comments which include the person who has made the mistake and the person who hasn't so that they can hopefully interact and help each other out. Nobody feels put on the spot. We have uh, tried to use uh, icons to turn feedback into an activity, into a task. So everybody takes part in it rather than just receive something. And we have turned uh, feedback comments into collectible items to uh, give people a sense of gain, so to speak. And last but not least, we have tried to include uh, task management and communication strategies in our feedback to give people a sense of autonomy and control. So thank you, everybody. And I suppose, question Fantastic. time. It is question time. Thank you, Jamila, that was brilliant. Really, really interesting. Thank you. And lots and lots of fantastic ideas in there, I think. So, uh, and lots of conversation in the chat. Uh, so obviously, I think a lot of people have got um, some brilliant ideas from that. Thank you. Uh, let's have a look at some questions. If you do have any questions for Jamila, then please do put them into the, the Q&A. Um, These are such lovely comments. That's yeah, incredible. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. You're being very kind. Mm, that was a good session. Okay. <laughs> so, you know. Um, okay, this is a question that sort of came in quite early on. So I'm not sure we can look at it. It's from Liang Kin. Kin. Sorry, apologies for the pronunciation of your name, um, Liang. How to evaluate or notice increased motivation? Is that something that we can kind of discuss? Oh, that's such a good question. Mm hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's such a good question. So, to me, when I hear, first of all, when I see that people haven't been discouraged and they speak, like they, they do the next speaking task uh, still eagerly, they're still willing to speak or even more, uh, in spite of the fact that some mistakes have been corrected, that's already a success for me. And also, if, the, if I see that they really uh, keep these cards, they're really happy, some of them like steal these cards even, even though they're for the whole team and we're, they're meant to be returned to. Some people actually pocket them. So <laughs> that for me means that they like the feedback session and it hasn't discouraged them. Mm -hmm. Okay, brilliant. Um, okay. Uh, so will it be possible, in your opinion, to use the feedback card set with young adult 
university students and you work at university mm. right Jamila so mm-hmm. 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 I suppose so why not absolutely I think that's a good idea uh if uh you have some kind of theory to teach out also to your university student it can as well include facts that you wish for them to uh to remember or to to think about or basically any kind of material that they're processing i think can be part of your part of your card game so i can imagine that i think it's a very good suggestion okay there you go there's your answer um alessandra thank you uh da, 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 uh and also teenagers so this is from Almudena uh santos santos uh I suppose your examples can also be applied in diverse teenage efl classes it's in the same way now i guess uh-huh i suppose uh, that's the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i um, hope it can be all adapted to your age groups okay uh, I'd like to ask if you prepare lesson. So this is again from Almadena. Uh, I'd like to ask if you prepare lesson plans with those examples, or if you improve these activities. I'm not quite sure. Not sure whether I understand the question. Yeah, no, I don't, I'm not sure about the one. Um, Basically, these are um, based on what we call imagined language. So whatever people need uh, ends up being on these cards. So mm-hmm. it's not part of the plan, apart from me having paper with me or sticky notes or glue. Uh-huh. Uh, but it really, it, it really is adjusted to each particular uh, situation. Okay. Um, so Jamila, this is a question from uh, someone on Facebook. Uh, let's have a look. So let's get the name. Uh, this is from Karen. Karen Winger Pell uh, is asking about one to one. I don't know if, what your experience is with teaching one to ones or how this kind oh, of. Oh yes, this is a great mm-hmm. question. Yeah, yeah, this is a great question. The thing we did uh, uh, right in the third third. Uh, with uh, blending the three comments uh, together, the three sections of feedback together. That works really well with one of my individual students who uh, tends to want to say things in his own way uh, without necessarily being interrupted. So this is something that he reacts really well to if the comment uh, appreciates the way he has expressed it and the addition is actually written down and he's then encouraged to actually reiterate using that word. So that is something that works for him. Also, uh, the way you uh, create a feedback task, you actually make gaps um, uh, in the places where the person made a mistake. That works really well with my individuals so that they see that there is actually an activity for them. And then we all uh, then we just get back together to these tasks and we the, he tries to or they try to uh, fill it in and they try to say it once more with the whole phrase or perhaps explain why uh, they made this choice of tenses and so on. So, yeah, I use, use, use very similar uh, techniques with my individual students. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, okay, question from Anna. Anna Pilch. Uh, how, of, how often do you manage to organise feedback exercises? I'm um, saying that she often runs out of time during the class and that some of the activities you presented seem like they take around sort of 15 minutes or so. Oh, yeah, good thinking. Mm, good thinking. So um, I'm lucky enough to have 90 minute lessons with my teenagers and with adults. And uh, with some individual students, it's even two hours or 120 minutes. So there is time for this. But this is Mm. a reasonable comment. Of course, uh, some of these things uh, don't have to happen in each single lesson. It can be something uh, much simpler. For example, there could be one card for each team or there could be comments on the board. Uh, For example, just five comments after each speaking task and you can just go over them but then it's really important especially for my groups to return to these comments afterwards no matter how short the lesson was or how how I mean how um, uh, yeah now I have 90 minute lessons so that makes it much easier I mean life lessons Mm -hmm. but obviously in shorter lessons you would have to uh, I would have to use my time more wisely but mm-hmm. wisely, but I definitely need to return to these comments because uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be like a regular, regular thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. 
Thanks, Jamila. Um, a question from Ulita about pronunciation and sort of evaluating that, um, saying that most of the time it goes quite negatively or it's difficult to make students understand. Do you have any techniques specifically for... I just didn't catch the word before negatively. Most? Uh, most of the time it goes negatively, so feedback on right. the pronunciation. Right. That's such a good question. So basically, I try to objectivize it. That it looks like I'm disappearing, but I'm just reaching out for my uh, basically um, dictionary. <laughs> mm, okay. Um, just to quickly show you what I do, if that's okay. So sure. this is something that works quite well sometimes with my students. So I'm sharing the dictionary page, at okay. least I hope. So for example, you have people who mispronounce work. So you can say, okay, great. That's a great expression. So let's all see how we say it. And I basically share my computer sound. Now today I've had some sharing issues, but <laughs> It's okay. we go. Sorry for the ads, everybody. And I'm like, okay, let's try everybody. It's not that easy. Let's all try. Work. Work, work. And I'm not actually saying it. I just, as we know, as teachers, we need to embarrass ourselves first to feel, make everybody feel comfortable. So I just kind of show them which muscles you actually use. So it's like, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it looks funny and it helps. Mm -hmm. And they hear it multiple times. Work, work, work. From a different person, because who am I to model people's pronunciation all the time, right? So the fact that they hear it from a different speaker kind of makes it more objective and for them easier to accept almost. So this mm -hmm. is one technique to play it from different sources mm -hmm. and just encourage them to try as many times as we need and really praise them for trying because it is it is hard. Sorry okay. for the ads. All right. <laughs> um... Okay, this is not so much a question, it's a comment um, from Chris, uh, Chris Fry, saying that he often found that students asked for, asked for more correction than he thought mm. was useful mm. or reasonable, particularly at mm -hmm. the start of the course, but soon they oh, saw yeah. the advantages, um, so they saw the advantages of being allowed to concentrate on fluency more than mm. accuracy. Do, do you find that that's the case? Do you sort of feel that students gradually, as they, as they progress in a course, they reduce the amount of of um, need, if you like, for, for correction. Absolutely, absolutely. Actually, I've heard a similar comment just at the beginning of this trimester. Uh, mm. And I simply uh, try to focus on this person just a little bit more and just make sure that some of the comments on the board in these three sections come from her so that she knows, oh, the teacher is doing what I need to be doing. And at some mm -hmm. point, they, uh, so to speak, kind of calm down because they know that it's, it, it sounds horrible, but they sometimes realize that also the other comments are chosen in the way that they're hopefully relevant for everybody. So it doesn't need to be like seven comments from this one lady, but things that are hopefully useful for everyone. So that's one way of addressing it. But yeah, I definitely try to make sure that this person gets their error correction. Yeah. And at some point they just realize that they, they might need fewer comments each time. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, let's see, I think we might have time for one more question. So this is asking just to go back and explain again a little bit about delayed feedback corrective feedback and recasting. Could you just sort of give us a quick um, recap on what those are? Okay, so a recast, people use it as both countable and countable now. So recast is that if you, for example, said, uh, okay, I have sister. The teacher would say, okay, you have a sister. So you basically repeat it correctly. And lots of people ignore that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's one of the downsides of recasts. Yeah. Okay. And then delayed and corrective. So this is a question from Mad Madulatha um, Belapu. And again, apologies for the pronunciation there. But uh, so that was recasting. And then just very quickly, delayed feedback and corrective feedback. So corrective feedback uh, focuses on basically troubleshooting, noticing the mistakes, uh, so to speak or to just put it bluntly, and a delayed feedback happens after the task. So you don't want, sometimes you just don't want to interrupt people when they're speaking, but mm -hmm. you keep collecting notes and then address uh, the whole group okay. uh, after the, uh, the task. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
I'm trying to see if there's any more. Um, 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 um. There's a question in Facebook. I'm not sure about this one. Um, so do you think that assessment feedback will be the is the last step in teaching? Mm. Like, mm, not quite sure. Mm. Um, um, to me, it's always great if it's not like the last kind of informative assessment when you just learn which mark or grade you've got. Mm. But if there is always something to use later on, but sometimes in a course or in a school year, there is there is a last day, right? There is always a day which is the last day. So maybe that's 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 the moment when you receive your uh, your uh, report. I don't know, mm -hmm. but if there is still time, I always tend to use something that we use next time. Okay, great. Um... Domela, thank you. I think we've run out of time pretty much. Uh, so we're going to have to stop there. But thanks ever so much again for a fantastic session. Um, really, thank really you, interesting. Everybody. Thank yes. you, everybody, for being great participants and so <laughs> many messages. Hope we can save these because they are lovely. Yeah, thank yeah. you, everybody. Definitely we can. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, especially if this is your fourth session. I hope that the, the whole week has been useful. We have uh, one session uh, remaining this week, and that is tomorrow. Uh, and um, that will be with uh, Adrienne um, Slapak, and she is going to be talking about assessment. Uh, what's she going to be talking about? Gosh, primary, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to find it. Uh, assessment for learning in the primary classroom um, and practical activities. That's tomorrow um, at the same time as today and yesterday and every other day. So we hope you can come and join us for that. Um, but yeah, I think that's enough from me. Um, thank you, Jamila. Thanks, everyone. And thank you to um, Sally and Melissa for um, fantastic moderation here in Zoom and also to, um, to Karen on um, Facebook. And thank you to everyone on Facebook who's been watching as well. Um, and we will see you hopefully tomorrow. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.